Hello, hello everybody. This is Ash and welcome to another uh, hex casting video. Today we are just going to be, I guess, optimizing um, my 3x3 three three hammer spell that I showed off in Live the Last video. Um, I It's been, what, three three days or so? A couple days? Maybe, maybe just one. And I, I realized a lot more optimizations, enough to almost half the pattern list uh which is why and it works the exact same so if i if i go this is my old one uh and uh if if we were to read this and then use oh and i installed um hex gloop which uh turns it from the you know w a d d into um the actual pattern so it's a bit more readable and it also makes the things significantly shorter. So for shorter snippets of focus, you'd be able to actually see the name. But um, if I then do Abacus Purification, you can see this is the old spell. There was 105 symbols uh, in that list. And then if I go this one and we read this and then do another Abacus Purification, this is only 58, um, so almost half, which is a lot less drawing effort. And I just did this by getting rid of redundant uh, patterns or redundant code. Um, it's kind of, if you're familiar with programming, there, are, um, I'm, I'm not, I can't remember the term for it, but there is a practice where you want to split as many things as possible into functions so that you don't have to repeat uh, code, right? Um, so so um, that's kind of what we've we've done, right? We've taken out um, most of the parts of the spell that I uh, had to repeat. For instance, this uh, raycast mantra, which is. Um, using Archer's Distillation. This gets the block that I'm looking at, so that'll be the coordinates of this, of, uh, this block right here. Um, so I've just put all of that, or all of, all of this, um, at the end of the spell, and then I'm combination distillationing it into the, um, the different part of the spell. So, um, yeah, and, and these work the exact same, right? Um, as you can see, and uh, over here we have an error that I'm going to get into uh, that might be helpful uh, at the um, after we've gone over the changes to the code. Okay, so here is the old spell. I can turn off the, the notes. Uh, you can see, so this is all 105 symbols, was it? Um, now, if we create another new layout, we can see I, I have a lot of repeated uh, segments of code here. So, um, these, I said in the comments, but these thoughts, they are inefficient. Um, right, we should only need to call one thoth over this entire um, phrase, right? So we're going to put all of these um, into one list, and then we are going to um, call that. That was the first optimization I did, right? So put all of these into a single list, and then we would run Thoth on that over this entire thing at once. Um, and e everything else could stay the same and it would work, right? Um, then I realized, well, wait a second, all of, let's see, all of here, so this break spell, 
is repeated three times in the code. That is what? One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, uh, si iotas, or um, sorry, patterns that are three times in the code. It's here, it's uh, here, oh, it's here, and it's at the end uh, here as well. We don't need all of that. Right, that's uh, inefficient. Um, and then another optimization I noticed was that we are using this flux recollection and a fisherman gambit to drag this list of vectors to the top of the stack. What we can instead do is we can just add them after before we call um, everything, right? Uh, and that way we don't need to recollect them, so we can also get rid of, of those two iotas uh, at the end of the, of the end of the lists, right? Uh, and, and we have to change the bookkeeper's gambit to reflect um, we're keeping this and this, and we're still getting rid of, um, where is it, these iotas. Um, no, sorry, the, this uh, disintegration um, with the, you know, the vectors or the, the look vector. Uh, so we still need to get rid of those so that when we thoth, um, it doesn't try to run, uh, it doesn't duplicate this. So over here we have the optimized code, and, and I, I, I want to say, I know this is not the best overall solution for a 3x3, it's just my solution for a 3x3. Um, there, there are some really smart people who's gotten the entire thing down to, what, 31 symbols? Um, uh, but, but this is my solution, this is how I did it. So we can see here, we have our uh, raycast, and then we're getting the block face. We are disintegrating the vector into, you know, this um, kind of thing. Then we are grabbing the first uh, iota, or the, I guess, the second, right? Because we're going 0, 1, 2, and we're fishing that and bring it to the top of the stack and checking if it's not zero, um, right? And then that will generate a true or false. And then we could generate a true or false here as well. And these are just rotate clockwise, and rotate counterclockwise. Um, and then over here, since we are just going to since this doesn't need any rotating, I've just used vacant um, reflection to create an empty list here. So then we run our augurs um, exhalations, and that will uh, reduce the stack down to just the this stuff, right? So the stack will then be, you know, our one. Zero, zero. Then it'll be um, a true or false, right? Um, a bull over here, and then it will go. No, sorry. The bulls will get be gotten rid of by the exhalations, right? So it'll just become our final pattern list over here. So it'll be these three from from this um, dis, uh, disintegration, and then our list of patterns that we want to run. Um, so it'll either be rotate clockwise, counterclockwise, or just an empty list. Then what we've got is we've got this repeated segment of code that we need on all of them, right? It is our um, Raycast mantra, and then Archer's this, Delation, and then 
add. Um, so we're adding whatever these rotated vectors are to this to get the surrounding blocks. And then we're breaking them. And then this is a combination distillation. Uh, and that will just dump all this list into the end of whatever winning list is here, right? So it'll either become this after this, um, after this, or just um, this empty list, it'll replace this. So then uh, we have our, um, you know, our, our starting vectors or our surrounding vectors. And uh, these get our relative positions for the um, all nine blocks. And then we're flocking them together with nine. And then here we change the bookkeeper's gambit to reflect how the stack uh, changed to look, right? Because now we've got this pattern and then we'll have our list of uh, vectors, vector list, sorry, my uh, writing with a mouse is horrible. Vector list in the stack, right? So we've got one, two, three, four, five items in the stack. So we're dipping these three out of the stack and then we're keeping these two with bookkeeper's gambit. Then we are running Thoth over the end, right? Uh, another thing I realized, right, is that we had a Hermes here to break um, our contents out of these um, things and run the Thoth on them within the brackets. Uh, we don't need to do that because we can just run, we can just get rid of the inner brackets and run a Thoth uh, on it straight up. So then, yeah, so that that's, and that's it. And that will break all of the things. Now you might notice this zero vector that was at the start before of the vector list is now at the end. Uh, and I will explain why that is. So here we have the optimized spell, but with the zero vector back at the start of the vector list, right? Um, so if we read this and then uh, we Hermes it, you can see, well, that didn't really break the right stuff, now did it, right? I was aiming at this block and it broke all of these. And then I could, I could be aiming at the side of a block, right? And we do it again. Um, and, and it's, got all lower a block. So what's happening is that our positions that we are looping over, um, it first gets the block we're looking at and it adds that to the list. Then it, when it actually comes time to break the block, it breaks the block and it changes where we are raycasting to. So then it's going to be looking at this block and it's going to be adding all of the relative vectors to that. So let, let's see, if we were to aim here and if we break that, it'll be there. It should create a U or it should break the surrounding blocks here. In fact, let's show it like this, right? You can see it broke those surrounding blocks because it changed where the raycast position was to the block behind it. And then it added all of the relative vectors to that. Um, so yeah, so to fix that, all I needed to do was I needed to switch the zero position to break last so that it will stay in place to get all of the positional vectors 
or for the surrounding blocks and then it'll break the center block um, because even though it all happens in an instant that it still um, is is looping through them um, and the game is updating within the spell I'm not sure exactly how it works but but it's it's changing the position as it loops through so um, if you're having an issue with that with ray casting then um, that would be why um, now you can probably actually use that so let me okay so to demonstrate this what I've got here is a list uh, of patterns which is just our rate cast it gets the block and then it breaks the block then I've got just null uh, and then I, I duplicated it 10 times with Gemini's Gambit and then I added all of those into a list um, so then if we thought it should break 10 blocks um, that we're aiming towards right so you can see it basically what that did is it just added null to the stack and then it run ran this added null to the stack and then it ran, ran this and that's basically just a counter it doesn't actually do anything but you can see when we ran the code it broke one two three four five six seven eight nine ten blocks um, for each element in the list and that's because we were aiming this way so every block face uh, it updated the list, uh, or it uh, changed where it was aimed, right? And it broke the next sequential block. So this could be used for like a like a tree breaker, I think. I, I might actually make that in my survival world because it's a very simple spell. Um, but it, yeah, so so that that is why um, you might have a ray casting error and why you can get that kind of issue where it seems like it's breaking the wrong positions. Uh, the reason this didn't happen for the last spell, right, uh, this one, is because we had separated the Thoth Gambit uh, into, we, we'd segmented it, right? So we could see we were rotating and then we were generating a new list with Thoth that had all of the rotated vectors then we were adding them and we were generating a new list with all of the edited vectors and then we were breaking them so we weren't recasting breaking and changing where our recast was until after we already generated the list and that's why um, this didn't happen with the old spell um, and why we needed to account for it with the new spell uh, but it was an easy fix, and this is like half the size, much more digestible and easy to write in survival. I will, in the description, have the um, edited or updated uh, spell list if you want to try and use the spell yourself. Uh, but hopefully this was helpful. Uh, thank you very much, and goodbye. Uh, oh, one last thing. Um, you can much easier test your spells if you are writing them on the uh, hex website the um, hex studio if you export the patterns it gives you that command now you can't write the command in your chat box because it's got a limit but you can write it in a command block so if you are in creative uh, just give yourself a command block and then paste the command uh, in here Right, um, you can see, click done, it'll, it'll show you however long the, the thing is, and then you can press the button and it'll give you a focus with the, um, with the item. That should be helpful for your testing.